Wake up with Carson Daly. That's a smile I like to see in the studio this morning. I did you I what up? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. I'm early, so I must be excited. So I'm early. thinking 15 years. I've never seen this in my life. What happened? Me neither. I know you took some live at this time. Usually. I know you took a little bit of time off to like recharge your batteries. I'm super you know, charged up. You're, you're overly charged. You're on time now. I know it works in my favor now. It's the exact opposite of hip hop. What I'm is going a lot on? Done. You got too much rest. Listen, it is great to have you. Let me just start with 2015, and then we're going to keep this whole thing progressive and moving forward. Yes, yeah, so then we can you, move on to 2000. Definitely, and you're 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 in the right place. I, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a and I'm a fan of. I'm not a, what I'm saying. What I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of this this overindulgent celebrity culture mm-hmm. and this this uncontrollable, insatiable appetite for knowing every single thing. In I mean, I'm a, I'm a music guy, yeah. so I want I want to talk about your music. But let's because of this article that you just did, yeah. And you have this quote about you, you had to have a psychotic breakdown last year. Just I'm going <laughs> to let you control this narrative, and then we're going to move on. But let's go back to 2015 to the tour cancelization to all the beefs, all the crap that was going on online. Yeah. Well, what for the record, I didn't start any of those beefs. I know, I know. <laughs> I was just defending myself. I never start any drama. I know. Um, I don't know why that was going on. You have to ask them. But so you go, you went, you know, like zero dark thirty. You go black on social media. What did that feel like? Yeah. Was that refreshing to just get off the whole thing? Um, yeah, I think it helped a lot. I think I it was very negative and. Just putting me in a dark place. Uh, I I already had enough going on. You know what I mean. And yeah. I don't think I needed. I had a lot of stuff going on personally as well that wasn't to anything to do with who's dissing who or any of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? On yeah, a, you had some real life, real yeah, personal I had things real happening. Real life stuff going on on top of that. So it was just a lot for me to handle. And um, I think the social media stuff on top of that just kind of took it over the edge a bit for me. And so, how dark did it get? When you say I had to have a psychotic breakdown last year, what <laughs> yeah. what, what did that? Maybe what did that psychotic. mean? Psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of an exaggerator. Your words, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see it in writing, um, it made me feel very out of control of my own life or my yeah. ability to have my own perception of who I was. Yeah. You don't want somebody else writing your narrative. I mean, there was so much going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you, um, I think it can get a bit claustrophobic when you almost, I like be, this whole gossip thing um, that we have in the entertainment industry. It almost reminds me of a soap opera. And it's like other people write your narrative for the soap opera and it is your real life and you might not want to have that storyline. You know what I mean? Right. It's funny because I would have paparazzi just outside my house nonstop. I couldn't even be in my garage without them like taking pictures of me and I felt very claustrophobic with that. Uh, I didn't feel like I could go and live my normal life because I felt like I had to be weary all the time of who was taking a picture of me or what that would turn into, what then would that storyline be and you know what I mean? So what's changed? What did you go and do and how is it going to be any different now when you reemerge? Um, I don't know. I That's just something that you have to deal with. But I think I just needed to regroup and figure out how I was going to be able to handle the fact that that's just part of being right. in the entertainment business. And everybody, of course, knows that that's a part of it when you get into it. But I think when you're actually living it, it's a bit of a like rude awakening. And it's hard to adjust uh, to th- to that so I just kind of tried to go away and do my own thing work on my album and just stay out of the spotlight long enough that my whatever my soap opera storyline is could just like go away I just was like be as uninteresting as possible as possible right which is the exact (laughs) opposite when you're trying like you put out your first record a couple years ago right new classic comes out Uh and then that's like you know you want to promote you know you're out Mm -hmm. there and so you want to be open you want to be honest you know, so someone someone goes after you on Twitter, like you said. You know, I didn't I didn't initiate that, but I'm not a punching bag either. I got to I got to protect myself. Yeah. So you you go back, then it becomes a whole thing. You you know, you had some. You're very open about having some work done, whatever. You talk about that. I mean, now that you're back in this incarnation of Iggy, yeah. are you more inclined to just like less is more? Just don't say, don't uh, offer oh, yeah, so much information. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I still want to be honest with people about things. I think I'm more cautious about maybe you're doing the lyrics. 
uh, yeah, well, I have in my album a lot. Trust me, there's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> but I think, yeah, it was good to take the time away and just be able to prepare myself for what, I, you know, the parts that maybe aren't the most fun parts. And I think I'll be able to handle myself a lot better. Well, this time I mean, around. look, you go into a radio interview now and it's like 90% of just about crap. And then it's like, oh, by the way, I got a new single yeah. out today. And then it's like, yeah. well, that's what I kind of came here for. Exactly. Y- you have to almost be the messenger. You have to almost keep it on the rails yeah, for it to be that Some people enjoy that. Some people enjoy just being really, really famous. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's about music or what it is that they're talking about. So I think some people just are happy to be talking about themselves or whatever their <laughs> agenda is. And for me, I think the biggest issue for me was that everything else got bigger than my music yeah. and th- it, that's a, you know that says a lot because I did have a lot of like really successful songs so for the gossip right. side of things to get even bigger than those records you know that's like a very hard out of control right. thing to, to manage and I love music I'm here to make music and I never want anything like that to be bigger than the record that I'm putting out because then to me it makes me feel not like a real artist almost. We're talking you know? to Iggy Azalea live on Amp Radio at 744. So you pressed pause, you did your thing, you're, you're, you're prepared, you look great, you got Thanks. a song called Team, you got an yeah. album d- Digital Distortion. Yep, yep, well, yep. So what, what is the plan right now? When's the album going to come out? Um, it comes out early June. Okay, good. We have an early... I love it. I didn't think I was yeah. even going to get that from you. Yeah. Alright, early <laughs> June... <laughs> March, so March, April, May. So you're in three months of like pre promo for this mm-hmm. release. Yeah. Is, is Team officially the first single? Yeah, Team's the first single. Yep. Team's great because you're the only thing on it. It's funny, you said a second ago, I want to make this about me now. Like yeah. I'm in charge. Even lyrically, I forget what you said, but you say like, you know, baby, I got me. Yep. Only friend I need playing on my team. This is, this is, mm-hmm. this is all about the theme of you. Yeah, exactly. I think I felt like, all right, well, if I'm going to have everybody try to like come at me then I have to support my own self and I have to be strong on my own and you know I don't need all of that extra stuff I'm just gonna rock this out myself you've had good collabs I mean you didn't even need that you were like I'm just gonna jump on this hook myself like normally you you step out of the booth and Charlie XCX runs in or Rita or Jesse Mm -hmm. or somebody Mm -hmm. and you're like nope I'm just gonna hang out and I'm going to sing this myself. Yeah, that was important for me. I wanted to show growth as an artist and I wanted to show that I could do more. I could carry the record if I want and show more of my ability um, as a songwriter and also just vocally. So I feel like I did this with team and I don't think it feels um, like me trying to fit into like this pop singer type chorus. Not at all. Not at all. Authentic and it feels like a good transition does. from from rap into the singing hook and you know I feel it felt, comfortable. It, it feels like a natural progression. It feels organic yeah. too. It yeah, doesn't exactly. feel like you're trying to make some grand statement. I mean, exactly, exactly. I didn't want to come out with a song and it's like it's me singing and it just sounds like oh that doesn't sound like something yeah, Iggy would do and right. this is very Iggy. So. It's a, actually it's a very understated hook too, which yeah. which puts more emphasis on your lyrics. I'll be honest with you, when we got the song, I was like Iggy's been out for a minute. Obviously, a lot of people's going to hear like what kind of production is going to come with. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you going to be saying? Is obviously I mean, for me, for music, it's all, especially hip hop. It's for me, it's always been lyrics first, production second. That's just my style. I tend to, I tend to like a little bit more of the East Coast vibe than the, than okay. the West Coast yeah, production. Yeah, like I do. I just, I like <laughs> metaphors. I like to hear, I like to hear what people are saying. Cause I want to know yeah. what kind of struggle they're in. That's because that's what makes me a fan of them. Uh huh. And I know, I know that on digital distortion, you're, you've, as you mentioned, have a lot to say. People yeah. are going to really get inside your head. <laughs> yeah. But let me just let's play the record just for your fans right now, and then we'll come back and wrap out on the other end of it. All right? Okay, cool. This is Team. It's Iggy Azalea on Amp Radio. Are you with the That's what I'm saying. There it is. Yeah. I love it. Iggy Iggy Azalea joins us live on Amp Radio 750. You don't seem too happy when you're listening to it. Are you over <laughs> it or something? <laughs> no, but it would be weird to be like. Just randomly, like, smiling, <laughs> listening to your song. I love it. I really think it's a great sound. I love, I don't know what Australia knows about Reggie Miller, our local boy. I like that reference yeah, in the first right. verse. I well, I have that. lived here for a decade now, so. I know. Well, Reggie goes way back, though. My, yeah. I know. Maybe Nick helped you out with that particular line. <laughs> I have to say, I do live with a professional athlete. I know. I get it. I get it. Um, what else about digital distortion? I mean, just if this, where, 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 where does team set us up for the rest of the tracks on the record? Are you going all no collab on the album? Uh, no, I'm not going all no collab. There's some collabs, um, but it's not collab heavy. There's like two or three collabs. Um, yeah. And I was very selective about what I want. I wanted to make sure like they were things that really added to the record and... Um, so I've got like a male rock 
uh, type vocal collab. There's a that's cool guy rapper. Since I can not be a guy and rap, um, right. I can't provide that either. <laughs> right, right. I get it. Yeah, and then another female. If collab. you weren't capable of doing it, you outsourced it. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of my approach this time around. I was like, you know what? I think before I wanted to collaborate with other artists, and you know, I'm new in the industry. It, you get very excited that you're able to collaborate with people, and that they even want to work with you. Yeah. And it still is very exciting. But this time, I think my approach was more like, you know what? I'm going to try to try my very hardest to make this song as great as it can be on my own. And if I still feel like there's something missing to it or something that I just can't provide um then i'm gonna outsource right so less collaborations but i still love a collab come on yeah no you, and you're good at it it's it, it, you have such a, a, a distinct style too so it juxtaposed you. against somebody else like yeah. that also just I really works to, i think i know how to pick them yeah you do no you've <laughs> done you've done quite well listen i'm not going to keep you here all morning because you're so what do you what, what are you doing the rest of the day are, is this it are you starting the no the i'm not doing promo much. train or I'm, okay I'm going one other place and then I'm going home to bed. I'm actually really very sick. Right? Oh, you never know. Yeah, I'm sick. You look great. Thank you. Yeah, Makeup thank you. Well, thank this. you for coming in. <laughs> I wasn't sick yesterday. I woke up yesterday and my throat was just dead. And then I got like all medicated last night. I felt good. I woke up today. And my body's just like yeah. It feels good when you're all dumb. when you're when you're loopy in it. Then it goes away. <laughs> yeah, I woke so, up today like oh, I think I'm getting the flu. I, I'm uh, not. It's are you back on social media now? Are you going to leave here and in the car, like start checking Twitter? Are you back in the, in the fray of everything? Um, kind of. I mean, yeah, I'm on Twitter, but it's not. I don't like go on on my phone. I have it on my laptop at home, so Smart. I go on there and you know check it out. But I think having it on the phone for me, it's too easy for me to do that in the car. And right. You know, it takes up a lot of your day, and maybe you might get sucked into the negativity of it all. So yeah, but that time you just had off, like you know now, like you keep all that stuff in check, and you don't have to like buy into the emotion of every single tweet, and don't let it get under your skin because once it does, it piles on and piles on, and you find yourself in a in an uncomfortable place. Yeah, exactly. And part of that is having boundaries. So, like for me, knowing that I do that, I just make sure it's only on my boundaries. laptop. And oh, you, you've been speaking okay. to somebody. Boundaries. That's a <laughs> boundaries. That, that here, when I say that yeah, word, that means. I paid three hundred fifty dollars an hour to talk to somebody. If I start talking about boundaries, I have boundaries now. <laughs> you have boundaries now. I need to get my boundaries back. Yeah, there are boundaries. It, there are, it, do not yeah. put Twitter on your phone. Good for you. Good for you. You know what? You sound great. You look great. You're under the weather. But thank you for coming in this morning, at Radio. No, Con- congrats on team. I think it's thank a jam. You. Thank and you. And we'll look forward to digital distortion. We'll get you back yeah. in here, maybe closer to June. Yeah, yeah. Iggy Azalea on ninety-seven one Amp Radio. The most music every hour with Carson Daly, ninety-seven one Amp Radio.